Good morning, Packers fans. Oh, barely morning, I guess. Now it's rolling into afternoon. Late start here on Packers Daily. I got back around four last night. So you know what? I figured I'd give myself a couple hours to get things right, get my head straight, get my head in the game, as they like to say in high school musical. And say hello to Packers fans worldwide here at noon Eastern on the Cheesehead TV social channels. The day after much drama came down the pipe for the girl green and gold, Aaron Rodgers and his folks dropping a, I'm not going to say a mini bombshell, a legit bombshell uh, a couple hours before the draft. Aaron Rodgers is tired of it, man. He's not going to put up with it anymore. He's done. He's never coming back to the Packers. We'll see him week one. Um, yeah, you know, Aaron's upset. This clearly has come to a head. All the reporting around it, the fact that uh, Aaron's representatives have been in Green Bay. Packers brass has been flying to California to talk to Aaron. Um, and obviously, whatever has been attempted has not worked. And we've heard reports throughout the offseason about working on Rogers' contract. Clearly, that has not helped anything. That has not, not come to an agreement. And Rogers is just fed up. And look, I do not doubt for a moment the king of carrying a chip on his shoulder uh, took a year and said, you know what? You ruined my uh, my Thursday evening a year ago. I'm going to create the ultimate shit show for you uh, this year. Yeah. Don't put it past him. Not even for a second. But ultimately, the Packers have made it very clear where they stand. They're not going to trade him. I understand that he wants out. And he's probably not going to get out unless... He doesn't report. Now, we're a long way away from that even coming to a head, but that's his one option at this point if the Packers stay true to their word, which I think they will. And I don't see him paying the Packers $30 million so he can go away and live his life and try to be a Jeopardy host. I think he'll be there week one. But there's a lot to play out yet, so we'll see how it uh, transpires over the offseason. I know I'll probably get tons of questions about it today, and I understand that. Um, but ultimately, as the man himself once said, R-E-L-A-X. A lot left to play out. And ultimately, I believe this road leads to Aaron Rodgers as a starting quarterback in 2021. After that, all bets are off. But for this year, at least, um, my hunch is he'll be back. Um, and of course, the Packers made a selection yesterday. Brand shiny new NFL player is in the green and gold. The Packers getting the Cornerback out of Georgia. Stokes is a good, good, good athlete. There's no doubt about it. Um, a lot of upside there. Some problems, some issues. That's why he slid you know, to the bottom of the first round rather than taken early. I mean, the grabbing, the penalties, that's my A number one thing I'm worried about. Um, that's one of those things, man. You get in that habit. They are tough to break. We've seen a lot of corners come through Green Bay that have had that issue and were unable to fix it. Whether it's Ahmad Carroll back in the day trying to use boxing gloves, whether it's current day, Josh Jackson. Still an issue for him, and that was an issue for him in college. Um, but you can't deny the speed. You can't deny the athleticism. He is a good cover guy. I, I like the pick. Um, I understand the pick. It's not something to get crazy excited about because how many cornerbacks and how many defensive backs have we seen run through the mills, so to speak, in Green Bay at this point? They've been throwing assets at that position forever in the draft. And, you know, they've obviously had some hits, but they've had way more misses. So, Definite wait and see approach with when it comes to Stokes, but I am excited that he's a Green Bay Packer, and I can't wait for him to sh showcase some of that speed and athleticism in the green and gold. Hello to everybody in the comments section. Good to see everybody. I know I got some super chats I gotta get to. Don't miss the super chats. It'll be bad. There we go, Matt. Thank you for the super chat. What the hell does going all in really mean anyway? It's not a button. It's nuts, a term thrown around. I mean, yeah, Matt, you all know what it means, though. It means signing guys that the public has heard of. That is literally what it means. That's it. That's what going all in means in the parlance of Twitter, uh, talk radio, etc. They signed a bunch of guys that people have heard of. And the problem for the Packers right now is the perception around the league and around the media is look at the Bucks. They signed a bunch of guys that people knew, names they were rec they recognizable names, they had a really good season and won the Super Bowl. So now everyone turns around and says, Packers, do that. That's not how the Packers operate. Never has been, never will be. You know, I understand there are teams that do that. And there have been plenty of teams who have done that and not hoisted Lombardi at the end of the year. But yes, all in is such a funny term. Uh, Alex, thanks for the super chat. I'd hate to lose Aaron, but I think it would be fun seeing what this team could do with love. Maybe too soon, but still. 
Alex, I'd be lying if I didn't say I was thinking about it yesterday. You're kind of forced into that realization, right? I think it would be a rough year. I think uh, Jordan would definitely have his ups and downs. I think, yes, it, it, there's no doubt the excitement level, um, getting a new guy under center, seeing what he can do, his athleticism, his playmaking ability, it's all there. But yeah, that would be a, I, I would think, a rough transition, a very welcome to the NFL type season. I uh, think you would definitely um, consider the Packers now not Super Bowl contenders if you're moving on from Aaron and going to Jordan. Not to say that they couldn't make a run, but a lot of things would have to fall into place. But like I said, I don't think Aaron's going anywhere this year. Preston, thank you for the super chat. I don't think it's a coincidence, coincidence that Rodgers decided to drop his bombshell on draft night. Andrew Brandt said, don't expect to trade soon, but possibly next season. Could we expect the farm if traded? Yeah, next season is kind of where I'm leading as well now after that. And no, yes, a billion percent. It's not a coincidence, people. That was absolutely by design to inflict maximum depth when it comes to media um, overexposure, which is what we've been treated to. Uh, yeah, that was absolutely calculated. There's zero doubt about that. Podcast, thanks for the super chat. Stoke for Stokes. What's up, man? Flat forward. I mean, come on. That 40 time kind of blows you away. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean a hill of beans when it comes to actually playing football, but uh, that kid is fast. There's zero doubt about it. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Dale, thank you for the super chat. Everybody needs to stop with the name calling. We have no idea what went on in those negotiations, no matter what CBS says. Correct, Dale. That is 1 billion percent correct. Could not agree more. Our secondary is pretty damn athletic. Joe, you got that right. B-Town, thanks for the super chat. Rodgers is acting like a little bitch right now. Back-to-back -back NFC Championship games, locked up top players at multiple positions, and he's disgruntled? Really pulling a farve about a quarterback being drafted. Show up or retire. Hot damn. All right, B-Town. Don't hold back. Look, I get he's frustrated, and this is his ability. This is his avenue to express that frustration. He's allowed. He absolutely has every right to be disgruntled and you know make waves publicly. And the Packers have every right to say, that's great, dude. We're not trading you, which is essentially what they're doing. So I hear you, man. I feel I feel the I feel the anger in this super chat. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's just words, man. They're just flying across your computer screen. Take a breath. Aaron's allowed to play out at the end of his career however he wants. It's like Brett said back in the day, let me worry about my legacy, you know? And Aaron undoubtedly knows where this will lead him. Yeah, you know, there's a, At some point this weekend, most likely at the Kentucky Derby, he's going to have to talk about this if he does step on a red carpet, which you got to suspect he will. And it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting to hear what he has to say. Joseph, thanks for the super chat. Thanks for the great guest lineup last night. I appreciated the focus on the team and not just the few players that take up all the media attention. Joseph, it's what we try to do, man. We're all about the green and gold. We're all about the Green Bay Packers. That's who we are at Cheesehead TV. I understand lots of other media outlets will kind of focus on whatever's popular, whatever gets the clicks, whatever gets the engagement. And I understand that. Totally get that. We're not above that. You know, we certainly do it as well. But, you know, it's draft weekend. It's time for hope, for looking forward not talking about some disgruntled employee, which is essentially what Aaron Rodgers is at this point. I can't wait to have him back under center in week one. But until then, I'm celebrating the Packers this weekend. And I, I'm glad you appreciate it, Joseph. Uh, by the way, speaking of which, I will be back live tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern for rounds two and three. Please do join me here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. I'll be in studio joined by Packers fans worldwide on our Patreon uh, Zoom hangout. Please stop by YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch. It's going to be a good time. Uncultured, thanks for the super chat. Morning, Nags. Zabe was so darn depressing this morning. Good thing I lucked into a lethal weapon marathon. Love the pick and last night's stream. Zabe is very, Zabe is all in on the drama. So Zabe is going to lean into whatever he's feeling. That's how he is, which I get, man. It's cool. It's all right. Again, fan how you want to fan. Do what you got to do. I understand it, man. But Zabe, yeah. Zabe, Zabe you got to remember, though, Zabe grew up. A Washington fan. So he's known nothing but crap since Dan Snyder bought his team. And uh, I think he's taking some of that residual pain and bringing it over to his green and gold fandom. So you can always uh, take that with a pinch of salt, so to speak. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Merck1987, thanks for the super chat. 
Thanks for a great show last night. I'm a Packers fan more than a Rodgers fan, but I hope the two sides can arrange something. What are you wanting to see tonight in the draft? Inside linebacker, offensive line, or wide receiver? I hope they get or finagle a way to get the kid from Whitewater. I would love to see him in a Packers uniform, uh, the offensive lineman. Um, uh, wide receiver, still a possibility, certainly. A lot of depth at that position. Uh, I'd, be, I'd still be surprised at inside linebacker, but that's not to say it can't happen. We'll see how it plays out. Smooterino. What a handle. Thanks for the super chat. Kind of with the Packers subreddit. Think Schefter made up some stuff to get clicks pre-draft, add the rest of the media, decided to follow suit with fake sources. I can 1 billion percent tell you that is not correct. There is absolutely real fire underneath the smoke. Now, has stuff gotten out there that is complete bullshit? No question about it. But the crux of the reporting from Schefter and a lot of the national guys, especially NFL Network, is very true and very real and very well sourced. And it's stuff that we've heard rumblings of from the local guys, whether it's Rob or Wildy or Schneidman. They've been talking about this for a while. So it's not hasn't come out of nowhere. Um, it's not made up. That I can absolutely guarantee you. Cameron, thanks for the super chat. I woke up this morning excited about the Stokes pick, excited for the next two rounds tonight. Then I saw the Orlovsky tweet. Ugh. So Orlovsky, who cares about an Orlovsky tweet? Are you serious right now? Come on. Come on. I do also find this funny. Like Aaron Rodgers loves to like belittle and or make fun of ESPN, yet he chose ESPN as his uh, preferred vehicle to drop this bomb. It's just kind of it's funny how that works. Uh, what else we got? So many super chats. I'll be getting to every single one of them, guys. Just hold on two seconds. Got to make sure I don't miss any. Uh, oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Craig. Thanks for the super chat. Aaron Rodgers, great grudge holder or greatest grudge holder? Oh, he's one of the all-timers. No doubt about it. I wrote it early on in his career. He's like Michael Jordan in that regard. Remember Jordan's Hall of Fame speech where he basically called out every living human being who had ever slighted him on the face of the earth? That's Aaron Rodgers. You have no question, no doubt, that is part of, yes, what makes him great. And it is certainly somewhat what is behind all this no doubt about it uh ryan thanks for the super chat how bad are things in green bay i don't think mcgargy said thanks for doing this to goop before his question last night mcgargy must be on team rogers <laughs> you guys are hilarious oh i love this shit it's so fun um michael how do i think it plays out i think they work out something contract-wise. He plays one more year in Green Bay, and they trade him next offseason. That's my hunch. That's my guess right now. After yesterday, before yesterday, I would have thought, you know, as long as Aaron's playing at a high level, they'll let it ride. But this is most likely his last year in Green Bay. Uh, Mitchell, thanks for the Super Chat. It hasn't even been a full day of drama, and I'm already over it. 10-10 would not recommend. I feel you, man. I feel you. Spencer, thank you for the Super Chat. If you got a two-minute segment on any national show, what do you say about how the Packers operate? Who would you most likely enjoy taking to task? LOL. Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, national shows, I guess you're talk, probably talking about Coward or Skip Bayless or whatever. And those guys are clowns. I got no time for that. Um, you know, probably Mike Silver. I would love to do a segment with Mike Silver on NFL Network going back and forth because you know mike's obviously in aaron's corner has been for a long time and has made no bones about taking the packers to task trying to pick them apart for how they operate etc i'd love to do a two-minute segment with mike about it that'd be a lot of fun and i like mike before anybody tries to imagine some beef like mike and i are cool um we just differ in our opinions on the packers jay green thanks for the super chat gilbert brown is the effing goat give him a job Love Gilbert. He was fantastic last night. It was so great of him to call in. Uh, like we said, we're going to see him at the training camp. We'll definitely be doing more stuff with him. No doubt about it. Um, Nicholas, thanks for the super chat. We brought back his bros, and they're excited about running it back. Even Jones took less money to come back. I doubt Rodgers would leave them hanging. You never know. You never know. We shall see. Too old for this. Man, I feel that this morning. Thanks for the super chat. Can we name our secondary King Alexander and the Knights of the Round Table? Holy shit, I love that. They're looking dangerous and clearly on a mission for the Holy Grail. That 
is the super chat of the day. I'm all in on that. King Alexander and the Knights of the Round Table. I'm down. T. Taylor, thanks for the super chat. Do you believe Rodgers leaked this on draft day to get back at Green Bay for drafting Love on the same day last year? Somewhat. Yeah. Zero question. Zero doubt. It didn't just happen to come to a head on draft day. Yes. 1,000%. Now, do I think that's specifically what's driving everything behind the scenes when it comes to his disgruntled nature with the Packers? No. But that dropping it yesterday was in direct response to last year's activities. Yes. 1,000%. Aaron Armstrong. Stokes reminds me of Sam Shields, raw and athletic. Yeah, that's uh, definitely possible. I mean, the speed is obviously there. The makeup ground is amazing when you watch that on tape. Um, Sam didn't have that bad habit, though, that grabbing habit. Now, maybe that's because you play wide receiver and then switch and then never really had the time to develop that bad habit. But um, I'm telling you, man, I've, I've talked about it with Josh Jackson. I talked about it with Ahmad Carroll back in the day. It's That is something that you've got to get out of your system but quick in the NFL or quarterbacks, offensive coordinators, every single third down, they are going to find you, especially your rookie year. And they're going to go after you and they're going to try and take you deep. They're going to try and get you to panic and grab. And you have got to rise to the occasion and you have got to fix that habit. That is the, that is the thing I am going to be harping on with this kid. No doubt about it. Craig Smith. Thanks for the super chat. To what extent does Goody have some Al Davis in his scouting DNA for giving size and speed over college production, favoring size and speed over college production? Yeah, I think there's there's no doubt you see that trend, right? Um, it has kind of been the imprint of most of his drafts and most of his early, especially the premium uh, selections. There's no doubt he loves his athletes. He loves the upside. He loves you know the idea of these guys and their untapped potential. I'm with you, man. I like. I don't mind so much if a guy doesn't have college production um, in the sense of if he's played a lot, like just because you haven't produced them, there's a lot of things that could be going into that. But if you've played a lot, like you're a senior and you've been a starter, et cetera, I'm down with that. But man, they have not had a great hit rate at defensive back in general when it comes to trying to project these athletes into something more than maybe they possibly are. So yeah, Craig, I think that's a, that's a good observation, and I think that's uh, pretty on point. Stanley, thanks for the super chat. Stokes and Alexander are going to be top cornerbacks tandem in twenty one. Well, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, bring down the mood or anything here, but Stokes isn't going to just be handed the job. I actually asked Brian about that very thing last night. You know, he's got to beat out Kevin King, and I know everyone's going to scoff at that, but Kevin King's there, Josh Jackson is there, Kadar Holman is there, Shannon Sullivan's going to be competing in the slot. Like he's not going to just be given a gig now. Hopefully, he comes in, makes some noise, and makes it impossible to keep him off the field. But you know, it's it's not a foregone conclusion. Aaron, thanks for doing what you do. Thank you, Mark G. Thanks for checking it out. Andrew Ware, thanks for the super chat. I loved four. I love twelve, and I'll love ten. I'm a Packer fan. That's it right there. I'm a huge Georgia fan, so I am pumped. Would have already pre-ordered the jersey, but I'm moving. Pappies, thank you, Andrew. The smalls ish. Thanks for the super chat. Interviewed Quinn for the school paper when I was still there. Great guy and great player. Down with that, man. That's cool. Uh, Javier, thanks for the super chat. Nags, thanks for doing this. <laughs> two parter here. Oh boy, we got the two parters going. Question is Can J Love take us to the toilet bowl? Undoubtedly. Also unexpected, but as soon as I heard the name, it clicked in my mind how much I actually love the pick. Let's go. I mean, the, the upside is there, like I said. He's a he's a fun prospect. There's no doubt about it. Let's just see if he can bring it on the field. Walter, thank you for the super chat. Got to ruffle some feathers when you do things right. That's very well stated, Walter. That is very well stated. Chris, thank you for the super chat. Quick shout out to Brian Gutekunst for addressing every question last night. Would have been real easy to say. I'm only talking about the draft. I mean, it would have been. Everyone would have. Everyone on the beat would have been like, "Oh, come on." Um, but yeah, it, it's nice that he's available. It's nice that he's answering all those questions, but it is his job, you know, and he is the face of the franchise when it comes to the constructing the roster. And he seems to be the, uh, at the heart of Rogers being disgruntled. So yeah, I mean, I appreciate that he answered those questions, but he's the general manager of the green Bay Packers. He should be answering those questions. 
Dustin, thanks for the super chat. Packers Twitter is real tiring. How do you put up with the, da the daily negativity? Dustin, I I'm gonna I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. Mute conversation and the mute button in general is God's way of telling you that He loves you. It's as easy as that. I have no problem with people who have differing opinions, who maybe offer up those opinions in a uh, even an aggressive manner at times. But if you are relentlessly negative and or offensive, yeah, you get muted or blocked. It's pretty simple. Um, and Lord knows, I follow and converse with tons of people who do not agree with me on most football stuff. But we can be chill. We can be cool and disagree on stuff. Adam Rank is a perfect example. Adam and I were joking the other day because Adam and I go back and forth on Twitter. He's a Bears fan, obviously, and I'm obviously a huge Packers fan. And he has been enjoying the hell out of this Rodgers drama. Um, and man, but when we go back and forth, the comments underneath our tweets are just crazy, man. People get so fucking nasty. And he and I off Twitter were just kind of joking, like, man, people must think we hate each other. And like, Adam's a cool dude. I think he's hilarious. We met uh, a couple times at the Super Bowl, at the draft, way back in the day. He's a really cool guy, and I like him a lot. We just like to bust each other's balls about our fucking football teams. Like, man, Twitter, yeah, that's why you got to just, just mute, move on. Otherwise, it just takes you down some bad, bad rabbit holes. Justin, thanks for the super chat. Maybe trade him. His return value won't get any higher. He doesn't want to be here, and we're going against Fields, Goff, and Cousins, LOL. You don't trade him this year. Trade him next year. I'm down with that, but and this is, this is, the return will never be higher. It probably would, never would have been higher than whatever the 49ers had on offer, and that was never going to happen. Uncultured Barbarian, thanks for the super chat. Worst thing this did was take a tension, tension away from the young men who become NFL players last night, Pappies. As I said on our stream last night, though, like it is in the sense of, Packers fandom and our attention and where it is focused, but for most of the league, fans of their team, they don't give a crap. They saw it, the bombshell drop in the afternoon and they gleefully took note. But once the draft started, they were all in on their team and the draft itself. Like the Rodgers drama is not consuming most of NFL fandom. They're very much in on their teams and their draft. Uh, Mitchell, thanks for the super chat. Also, would love to sit by a fire with old Gilbert. That would be cool. Dude, the Gravedigger is the, he's the absolute man. I love Gilbert. I got to bring back the Gilbert Burger. T. Taylor, thanks for the super chat. Agree, disagree. Unless we can win a Super Bowl or two, Goot may be remembered as the guy who drove his three time MVP winning quarterback out of Green Bay a few years too early. I mean, yeah, even if they do win a Super Bowl, if Rodgers leaves after that, say they win the Super Bowl this year and then Rodgers is gone, which would be amazing but let's say that happens and then jordan love comes on the scene and just isn't it i'm not gonna say he's like, terrible but just isn't it um yeah that will be goody's legacy he's the one who stopped the train so to speak but on the flip side ron wolf traded a first round pick for a third round guy who was basically drinking himself through atlanta and who packers fans were like what who when we had don mikowski and everyone thought the magic man was the bee's knees Ron Wolf put his legacy on the line, and Brett Favre became a legend. Ted Thompson took Aaron Rodgers. When he already had Brett Favre at the end of his career, trying to get back to that second Super Bowl, everyone thought Ted was crazy. There were huge factions. Everyone wanted the Packers to do everything they could for Brett to get him another Super Bowl. Ted said, nope, Aaron's my guy. Rodgers became a legend. Now, I'm not sitting here saying Gutekunst has clearly found the third guy. You know, this trilogy is going to continue into production after getting greenlit. But you talk about becoming a legend yourself. If Gutekunst pulls this off, put him in the Hall of Fame. Put him in the Hall of Fame. That's all I'm saying, man. And I'm not sitting here telling you it's impossible. Is it incredibly difficult? Is it likely to happen? No, of course not. But damn, what a dream. What a dream. BJP, thanks for the super chat. Why drop the bomb yesterday? Aaron's Hail Mary to get traded to San Francisco before the pick, their QB of the future. Aaron plus San Francisco equals multiple Lombardis. I mean, yeah, I know he wants to be in San Francisco, but there's no way on God's green earth that Gutekunst is going to make that trade. And Aaron knows it. The ultimate reason for dropping the bomb yesterday was to create massive chaos and to make the Packers as uncomfortable publicly as possible. That is the main driver. 
Adams less likely to return. Colby, I vehemently disagree. Green Bay's money is green. Adams has been productive no matter who's throwing him the ball, whether it's Aaron Rodgers or Brett Hundley or Jordan Love. If the, if the Packers show him the money, he'll stick around. 100%. Ben, thanks for the super chat. Feel for Jordan Love right now. Kid's done nothing wrong, and Aaron caused this drama after going through the same with Favre. Hope Love is awesome. I'm with you, man. All this does is like reinforce how much I am rooting for Jordan Love. Not sitting here telling you he's going to be good. Not even sitting here telling you he's going to be competent and be able to lead them to winning records every year. I have no idea. But holy mother Mary of God, am I rooting for the kid. Zero doubt about that. Totally hear you there, Ben. Green Bay Productions, thanks for the super chat. Realistically, if Rodgers comes back and then we go win the Super Bowl this year, does he still want out? You'd have to ask Aaron. Like I said, that would be fucking amazing, right? That would be absolutely incredible. The, the whole narrative around that would just be mind-bending. Uh, Grim Chief, thanks for the super chat. Are you telling me that Rodgers wasn't given his, quote, honest thoughts all year on the McAfee show when he said he wasn't mad and wanted to be a Packer? That's a funny question. I would love to know. Mr. Zen Master, I found this new place in my life. I'm going to control what I can control. Kumbaya. Fuck you. Pay me. That's kind of where we went, right? I don't know, man. That's a great question. I'd love to hear an answer from the man himself. Backcountry52. Thanks for the super chat. How many fingers of garage tequila did Goot have last night? <laughs> oh, man. That's a good one. I'll ask him today. That's a really good question. Reese Wolf, thanks for the super chat. Love the pick last night. Been a while. Hope all is well in your world. Bears still suck. That is a perfect super chat. Thank you, my man. Chase, thank you for the super chat. I almost have more respect for Far for, despite being unhappy, at least showed up for two years and flew in for a third than what QB1 is doing right now. Chase, there's a lot left to play out. I keep like I keep coming back to this. Like they, you know, it, 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 Rogers is playing the game and he's using the leverage he's got, which right now is public sentiment. But, you know, ultimately, there's a lot left to play out yet. I suspect things will cool down. Aaron will come back. He'll play it out at least this year, and then we'll see where they stand. So we'll, 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 we'll see where it, where it lies. Joseph, thanks for the Super Chat. This is simply to add another Super Chat because it's nuts for you right now, Lord. <laughs> Samuel Cosme. Thanks, Joseph. Fernando, thanks for the super chat. Is Mark Murphy also under contract or does a board elect that role? How different do you think the situation would be if the Packers had an owner? I guess it would depend on the owner's relationship with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, the Patriots have an owner, and they have a guy who was pretty damn good at the quarterback spot. And all we heard the last couple of years was the drama surrounding them, the trio of owner, coach, and player. So having an owner, I don't think, is any kind of you know, guard against uh, deteriorating relationships with your quarterback. Um, as far as is Mark Murphy under contract, he has a mandatory retirement age, which I believe is 70, if I remember right. Uh, that's in the bylaws. So um, he has a, a couple more years. on. I think he's got like four or five years left on the job. And then they'll have to, uh, then the, yes, the executive committee will nominate and the board will elect uh, his successor, which if they, you know, if reading the tea leaves, it sure, Seems like uh, Ed Policy will probably take over when Mark moves aside. But yes, he is uh, required to retire at a certain age. Bob, thanks for the super chat. Been turned out, tuned out for a while. So what is Roger's issue with the Packers? Not trying to be facetious. I'm sincerely confused as to what is going on here. He's just fed up, Bob. I don't know. There is no silver bullet thing. From all the reporting I've seen, he is just disgruntled. That's it. The Packers have tried offering him contract extensions. They've tried restructuring his deal. They just haven't done what he's wanted. He hasn't made him, they haven't made him part of the process when it comes to building the team. Uh, they haven't done enough, apparently, to surround him with the types of players he wants, I guess. I don't know. He's just fed up, Bob. That's why it's kind of like a mini tantrum, essentially. A tantrum for all the media to see. Craig, thanks for the super chat. You said that you expect 12 to be traded next offseason. What kind of return do you expect? Depends, I guess. And if he continues to play at an MVP level this year, I think it would be pretty significant. A couple draft picks, probably one premium one. I don't think it's going to be like some Herschel Walker type deal, but we'll see. Miguel, thanks for the super chat. All we need is love. I feel you, man. Totally feel you. 
Uh, da, 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 Stanley, thanks for the super chat. I love the reaction from Amos and MVS on Twitter from this drama. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty great. That was pretty great. Uncultured, thanks for the super chat. Rene Russo was firing Lethal Weapon 3. Pappies. <laughs> Lawrence, thanks for the super chat. What do you think we can get for a Rogers trade? Just answered that. Uh, that ain't happening this offseason. Patrick, thank you for the super chat. The best draft show in the world yesterday. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks for checking it out. Hope you're well in your new, uh, your new digs. Uh, JD, thanks for the super chat. Double dip tonight. Jenkins and uh, Jay, okay. I would be down with that. Um, I doubt they do, though. Um, but yeah, I, I'm all in on it. Robin, thank you for the super chat. Looking forward to another late night tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it. Speaking of which, I got to get going. Make sure I don't got some super chats. TKM, thank you for the super chat. 12 teams never won the Super Bowl. Four teams never been. All have an owner. How is that working out? Pappy fun. Enjoy your weekend in New York City. Thank you, TKM. Thank you for being at your post. Matt, thank you for the super chat. If he doesn't put out there that he's unhappy with what he's unhappy with, he risks losing his cause. Well, maybe he will talk to someone. Maybe he'll go on. The Pat McAfee program again. Although he did literally just appear there a few weeks ago and said nothing has changed, when obviously a lot has changed. Joshua James, thanks for the super chat. Who's more dramatic, wideouts or quarterbacks? Rogers acts like he's a changed man and in a better state, but then this comes out, very suspect, LOL. Man, we're all just human. We're all just trying to work our way through this crazy thing called life. Spencer, thanks for the super chat. Who enjoyed getting a little Cali Sun more? Goody, Murphy, or LaFleur? I got to think LaFleur and Rogers was probably the most chill of all those visits. So I'll go with LaFleur. Uh, how does Aaron Rodgers reconcile this with concern for legacy in Green Bay? And how much Tampa Bay going to Tom Bay, Brady going to Tampa Bay affected it? Obviously, I could never even presume to answer the second part of that question. But how does Aaron, Ryle, Aaron Rodgers reconcile his legacy in Green Bay? As Favre said back in the day, let me worry about my legacy. And I'm sure that's what Aaron Rodgers is saying right now to anyone who will ask. Um, I don't think he's concerned two shits about it right now. Um, things will play out however they play out. He knows what he's done. He's got the pelts on the wall. There, are, There's little doubt he will be beloved in Green Bay by most Packer fans for a long time, no matter how this plays out. And he knows that. All right, everybody. I'm going to get going. I got a lot to do. Thank you so much for hanging out, talking Packers. Tons of people, obviously, interested in what's going on with the green and gold because of the Rodgers bombshell. But I also know the diehards are here to talk about the draft. We'll be doing that tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Please stop by. It's going to be all night and all day tomorrow. Talking Packers, talking draft. Uh, please do hit like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. And then tell your friends, tell your family, Cheesehead TV, we are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Go Pack Go.